In this video, I will show you how to calculate the gait cycle duration, stride length, and vertical displacement of the center of mass during the gait cycle. The rest of the variables in the handout can be calculated using the same methods. So the gait cycle duration is the time it took for the subject to complete a full stride, which is from the first right foot initial contact that occurred in the frame 51 to the second right foot initial contact that occurred in the frame 730. What you will need to do is to look at the column B, which has the time that correspond to each time, uh, each frame, and find out uh, the time that corresponds to the frame 51 and 730. As you can see, the time that corresponded to the fifth frame 51 is oops, 0 0.102, and the time that corresponds to the frame 730 is all the way down here but it is 1.46. This means that the stride started at 0.102 seconds into this data set and ended at 1.46 seconds. From this, you can say that the time it took for the subject to complete the stride was 1.358 or 1.36 seconds if you round it. Um, and what I did here was simply subtract uh, 0.102 seconds from 1.46 seconds. The stance phase and stride phase durations can be calculated using the same methods. Uh, make sure to use the correct frame number and time that corresponds to the start and end of each phase. The stance phase and stride phase durations as percentage in gait cycle can be calculated by dividing the duration of each phase in seconds by the gait cycle length and multiplying the number by 100. Also, cadence can be calculated by dividing uh, 1 by the gait cycle duration and then multiplying the number by 60. The stride length is the movement of the point in the horizontal direction uh, during the single gait cycle. In this data set, the axis that corresponds to the forward direction is the positive, uh, positive y-axis. So we will look at the column G, which has the center of mass coordinate in the y direction, and find out the, uh, how, find out how much the center of mass moved in the y direction between the frames 51 and 730. Um, as you can see here, the horizontal position of the center of mass at frame 51 was over here, negative 1.17 meters. In the frame um, 730, was 0 0.109 uh, meters. This means that the center of mass moved uh, from negative 1.17 meters to 0 0.11 meter uh, during the stride. From this, you can say that the stride length of the subject was 0 0.11 meter minus negative 1.17 meter or uh, 1.28 meters. Now that we calculated the gait cycle duration and the stride length, you can calculate the average gait velocity by dividing the stride length by the gait cycle duration and multiplying the number by 100. At last, I'll show you how to calculate the vertical displacement of the center of mass during the stance phase. The axis that corresponds to the vertical direction is the z-axis. We will therefore look at the column h and find the largest and the smallest number in this column uh, between the frames 51 and 730. Take a look at the figure 
um, that shows the vertical displacement uh, of the center of mass during the gate cycle. And based on the figure, you can tell that the largest number would be around 580. And the smallest number right here, or the lowest center of mass height, would be right around here, which is around frame 70. Okay. Uh, so once you identify these numbers in the column, um, I believe it was H, yeah, column H, uh, you'll subtract the lowest center of mass height from the highest center of mass height to calculate the vertical displacement of the center of mass during the stance phase.